Uh, hello, hello. Now I have an uh, interview with uh, one very interesting person. We know each other personally, so that's why it's easier to record such interview. Um, this special woman, my special guest, is from Bulgaria. So we will speak today about what is so special about dating in this country. Because if you think about meeting somebody from another country, First of all, uh, you have to know what is special in, in this country and how can you adapt your mentality or your dating strategy to what's happening in the other country. Okay, now we have Eva and she will introduce um, herself. Uh, so please tell us about you, your, your agency, how long are you in, biz in this business, maybe how you came to matchmaking and coaching. Hello, Ksenia. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure. Yes, uh, I have, I'm a, a dating and relationship coach. I call myself a love coach. And I also do a little bit of matchmaking, mostly for my uh, coaching clients. I also uh, organize uh, singles events uh, with a business partner. So these are uh, yeah, the three main services that I offer. Uh, before uh, falling in love with coaching, I was a marketing and PR manager of a media company. Yes, I have an MBA, so my background is uh, in uh, economics and management. But I'm so happy uh, since for 12 years already, I have been helping people uh, to love themselves, to transform themselves, to fall in love with life and to attract their life partner. So this is my passion, my mission. And I'm really, really happy about what we all do. Uh, do you work only in your country or you work international as well? Yes, since coaching is my main business, I coach internationally. Yeah, most of my clients are based in Sofia, but also I coach people from all over the world. Bulgarians living abroad, also foreigners living abroad, foreigners living in Bulgaria. So yeah, it's a mixture. I have been living and working abroad, so I'm also very international. And uh, I might not be able to distinguish very well the Bulgarian uh, type of dating because of my global experience, but let's see where it goes. Uh, of course, of course you can, because there are really little things you don't realize. I had a discussion about this mentality thing and with one British guy, and he said, oh, you know, Russian food mentality. I said, what is about food mentality? Okay, it's different food, but what is so different? He said, you know, because in, in UK, you usually get like portion, you get your food on the plate. And in Russia, I think in Bulgaria as well, you have bowl in the middle of the table, you have big pan in the middle of the table, and everybody takes from the pan, from the bowl, how, how much you want. And if it's not enough, we go to the fridge, chop something additionally, because our guests should be happier. But it, this is part of mentality. We don't think about it, but it's really bowl in the middle is quite Eastern European. It's not Western European. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. So you, you, it's, there are little things you don't realize and, you know, so why, you know, it should be in the middle. Why not put some food on the plate? Yeah, because it's tradition. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Yes. And in, in Ukraine, for example, if the, it's, it's a wedding, it's usually two days. In Russia, wedding always two days because first day is officially and second uh, for a second day for the friends. Again, you know, there are so many such things you don't think about it. Yes, but you have to be aware what is happening in other countries to make the comparison. Yeah, okay. I'm sure in the conversation things will come up. Yes, it's uh, one other thing because of the events, you know how to organize events and how people sign up and how uh, they participate. If you host event in, in Germany, because I do many of them in Germany, people usually, men usually come 30 minutes before start, before the begin. British people come usually 30 minutes after begin. When I organized my first event, and, and you know, in the time of begin, I was alone in the room and no, nobody showed up. I thought, what I am doing wrong? So I started checking, you know, time is right, place is right. 
where are the people? So, yeah, so important to know what's going on to organize. Okay, a question for you. In your uh, coaching business, do you like to work more with men or with women? I don't mind. Uh, in the beginning, I was focused mostly towards women and my marketing communication is targeted to women, but I work 50-50 with men and women. Uh, men find me themselves. They look online and they immediately find me and contact me. And women, I just target my marketing to them. So it's really 50-50. Very interesting. It's, it's really very sure. interesting and very unusual because most of the time it's for men or for women. Very difficult, you know, so very seldom you will find situation where it's mixed. Really interesting. What is the uh, main problem uh, for men? So first, first uh, thing you see when your coaching clients come to you, where do you start usually with men? Of course, I have a, a whole procedure. We first, I send them a questionnaire. Then we do a video call, which is free, just to get to know each other. Then I send them agreement. Then there is an extended questionnaire that they fill before the first uh, coaching session. So on the first coaching session, we discuss their answers to this uh, intake uh, questionnaire. And usually, uh, with all of my clients, not only men, the issue, let's first say that uh, I work with single people who want a family or a long-term relationship. So we start uh, digging what is the blockage, where is the problem, why until now they haven't managed to do this. And usually it is either something with, with their mother, with the man, of course, so with their mother, <laughs> or some ex-partner. They were very hurt or they are still thinking about somebody, so it's these main topics, parents, like the family they were born, or previous partners, this is where we start uh, working with. Them. Again, very interesting thing, because men uh, usually are not so deep into psychology, and they don't think about that they really hurt or um, some bad relationship to yes work. they don't most of them don't realize it but when i ask them the question we figure out what has happened yeah really interesting really interesting thing again okay so um now the our main main question um what do you think um is special about people in bulgaria generally so how would you describe this mentality Again, it's hard for me to, to say, but there are people who are very traditional. They believe in the traditional roles, uh, male, female. And there are people who are very modern, who have uh, lived abroad and traveled a lot, and they believe in equality. So this is the first thing that comes to my head. Like younger people are more equal, and of course, older people are more traditional. This is no surprise. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Like like every, probably like everywhere in Eastern Europe, you know this this is the man role. I have to be a strong. I have to earn money. I have to protect my family, and female role and this female energy. Yes, and and this old uh, thinking and traditions and this new uh, about the empowerment of women uh, makes all people very confused about the roles in the relationship and in the dating process. That's why I have several principles that I recommend to my clients, uh, like in the dating process in the beginning that the man is the active uh, person who pursues the woman. Okay, uh, for the first uh, impression or the first time they get to know each other, she can initiate, but afterwards, he should be the one calling her, inviting her on dates, planning the dates. And this is very crucial because many women are so impatient and in between the dates, they will call, they will write, they will initiate contact. And this is how they end up in the wrong relationships. So this is major thing I always suggest. Men, you should not wait for the woman, you have to be active. Women, wait for the men to invite you on the second date. Uh, I work with most, most, of the, most of the time with German men and uh, Russian Ukrainian women and I have I don't have this problem on the women's side because women are always happy to sit and wait. You know, it's it's our national thing. But this problem with men, they send one message, 
she doesn't answer, you know, what, whatever the reason. And they are afraid, they are really intimidated to send one more message, even if it's not bad. And, and I always say, you know, guys, in your normal business life, if you don't get an answer, you just send one more message. It's not bad. Yeah, but what she will think about me? She can think that I'm annoying. Oh, you know, I don't know. Should I? You should. Do it. Just do it. Yes, I, I know what you mean. You know, it's because men are really um, afraid of women. It's a thing. They are afraid of rejection. Yeah. Oh, rejection. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I always uh, advise women to be very caring, very tender. Yes, to say their minds, to be direct, but to say the truth with love. Because men have been so hurt by women in the past that they don't dare to approach women nowadays. And women wonder why they don't approach me. Yeah, because several women were really rude and now they don't dare approach. And this is very sad. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Poor man. <laughs> All interviews still, you know, end of something. Like, Poor man. <laughs> I'm so sorry for them. Uh, okay. Um, but uh, as, as you said, it's really interesting thing that uh, elder generation, they are still in these traditional roles and uh, roles expectation. And the younger uh, generation, they are more about uh, equal relationship, but it's confused them because they learn from their families how it should be in traditional family. Yes, and maybe uh, one of the couple is more traditional, the other one is more modern, and there is miscommunication and misunderstanding. One is expecting one thing, the other one thinks that he is expecting. So, you know, I always uh, advise direct communication, open communication. Don't presume, just ask questions, just share what you need and what you want, because otherwise it's not going anywhere. Okay, so, but if I speak about uh, typical, okay, there is no typical, but more traditional um, dating in Bulgaria, what can uh, people expect from from this mentality because in germany it would be for example um, so many many people pay uh, different uh, they, their bills separately in the restaurants in russia and ukraine women will, would expect men to pay for the bill and men will be really hurt if women will say you know i will pay my part you know you are a woman you are invited uh, is there is something special about uh, dating in bulgaria we have to know yeah, I will again say what I recommend. I believe that the one who invites on the date is supposed to be paying for the date. And usually this is the man. So if the man cannot afford an expensive, expensive, expensive restaurant, he can take her for a walk. He can take her for just uh, tea, you know. But I believe that the man is supposed to be paying if he is inviting her. How difficult is for men to understand it? How difficult is for them to accept this? It's not difficult. It's 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 like it's common. Most men say yes. I agree. I even feel very bad when the woman starts fighting with me and she doesn't let me pay. You know, it's similar to what you are saying. So this is not hard. Most of men and most of women agree with this arrangement when I suggest it. Uh, very. <laughs> Very important question with flowers, because again, in 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 my all day job, uh, many women okay, not first day, but for the second date, they accept uh, or you know would like would be happy to get flowers because flowers in in our culture it's something sign. He sees me as a woman, and I get my acknowledgement as a woman in the form of flowers. What would Bulgarian women say if the guy will uh, show up for the second date with flowers? With flowers. With flowers, yeah. She will be very happy. She will be surprised, I think, because most of women would not expect that on a second date. Uh-huh. Yes, and, but I would like to comment on the first date. Uh -huh. it's, for me, it's quite weird to bring flowers on a first date. And some men do this. And I suggest, okay, you don't know this person, so you're just buying flowers by default. Wait to know her and then choose personal flowers. You know, it's it's something that you need to think about. 
And yeah, later on, flowers are great at any stage. Of course, not some big bouquet very early on. You have to be sensitive to what the woman expects, what flower she likes. Maybe you can ask her. But it's always a nice gesture. No women would get offended if he brings flowers. Or if she does, maybe she needs to talk to her therapist about it. Yeah, it, it, it will be a problem not with a man, but with a woman. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> But you know, so I agree with you about first date because I remember so 20 years ago, it was absolute normal, absolutely normal expectation by women to to um, to get or to uh, dream about flowers on the first date. And I always say, you know, just imagine you don't know this guy. You don't know how long does it take with your date. Just imagine you as Russian Ukrainian, high heels, your back. In, in in one hand in the other hand you have the guy and somewhere you have to to hold flowers and this is first date you you, you should be you know like like romantic princess like uh, a fairy uh telling nice stories and here you back here's a man flowers heels are it's it's not manageable and uh, the same thing i explained explained to men and you know so it's, it's start starting yeah, this is what you say, it's interesting. I would like to comment on a few things. Uh, first of all, I see that uh, not only in Bulgaria, but probably also everywhere, women don't wear so much high heels anymore. And also, personally, I don't wear high heels because they're not healthy for your body. And I suggest more casual dates, not to have so uh, expectations from the fairy tales that you are the princess. For me, this just uh, doesn't help the process. It's just uh, a meeting to let to get to know each other. Don't start projecting, imagining, make it uh, so pink, and you know, just be there, be authentic, uh, have fun, and don't even think that this is a date because you just don't know this person yet. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I often give advice. So if you're going to the date or if you're going to the party, just imagine it's a met meeting with uh, old school friends. Don't think about his, he or she is a new one and I have to impress this person. Just think, you know, so we went uh, to the school together. It just will be just meeting after many years after school. Yeah. And it helps really. Yes. Something else that I would like to, to, share, to share. It is my personal preference and experience. I'm not sure if this is Bulgarian thing, but I know it's some countries is different and with some people is different. I personally love sharing food. Like when I order in the restaurant, I always suggest for the person to try my food. And I'm happy when he suggests that I try his food. And sometimes if I feel connection, I can even uh, suggest that we share the food, like we order together and eat from the same plate. And for some people, this is very unusual. Yeah. So. Yes, it is. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it uh, with Russian Ukrainian women. They will not understand. They might think it's not about a food. Something like it's my plate, so I don't know you at all. Why should be a she and your? I don't know your uh, microbes will be on my plate. Yeah, you can say you can have uh, separate plates to put uh, on your separate plate, but to have a main uh, meal. Yes, I understand what you mean, but for me, it's very nice thing to, to do. Of course, you ask the other person if he's open, and if there's no connection, you don't even go to the restaurant. But <laughs> yeah, but you know, I think it's really interesting thing, and I hope many singles will use it because it really starts something a little bit. We are playing a family. Not we have uh, strange people meeting for our first meeting, but uh, first date but we start playing family in the form we are sharing food even from different i think it's great because yes and one one more thing even when you uh if you decide to share the process of choosing the food to share tells a lot about the people if you have similar tastes if you are willing to to compromise for the other person you know this is already going deeper Absolutely. It's like like team building in the form. Yes. We discuss what to eat, how to eat, how to how to share, how to cut, who eats the best part of it. It's really interesting thing. I didn't think about it. 
what what I recommend, what I recommend about uh, first date and and generally, many people in the in many restaurants, it's like this. They are they uh, the chairs. They are on the opposite side. You sit like on the interview, and I always recommend if there is any chance sit next to each other or like on the corner yes. because in this moment you can touch elbows and it's really closer instead of sitting on the uh, different uh, sides of the table yes the only thing that is against this is that you cannot look the person in the eyes which is very powerful but yes i agree the best case scenario is a round table where there is no corner dividing you and you're not sitting in front of each other, but you're not also just next to each other. So you can see the, the person, but not every restaurant has a round table. So uh, if there is if there is uh, something like rule, you, 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 you mentioned it to in Bulgaria to look each other into the eyes. Because in, in Germany uh, or in the UK, if you meet somebody, it's really like like a rule. If you're not looking into the eyes, uh, in this, you show that you're not interested or you are bored. In Russia, in Ukraine, it's absolutely fine. You can talk to people, not look into their eyes, and nobody really will not think that you're not interested because you, know, you, you may be just not scared, but uh, you don't feel right. Shy, yes, shy. Uh, how is it in Bulgaria? For me, especially if the person is not looking at me in the eyes, I get bored with this conversation on the 10th minute, I'm gone. So if they are so shy, yeah, they can share. I'm sorry, I'm shy. That's why I will be looking around. But this connection for me, it's crucial. And we have a tradition, maybe it's not only in Bulgaria, but when you say cheers with your drink, it's a must that you look the person in the eyes before you drink. And many people don't do this, so we educate them. <laughs> yes, and uh, they are, even they are, think how to how to hold the glasses different in different countries. Because in Russia, you can simply have the glass on, on, on your palm. It's absolutely fine. But in Germany, you have to be like, like in aristocratic families, you know, be very careful with your glasses. Yes, but there is a very practical reason for this, because usually this is a wine. And if uh, it's uh, rosé or white, if you hold it like this, you will warm it up with your uh, uh, body temperature. So that's why you better hold it for the, yeah. Okay, what is uh, uh, what are some special things uh, we have to know about uh, people in Bulgaria and how to date them? Some, you know, maybe some, I don't know about some celebration or some traditions or maybe the, you know, this kissing right left. Because in France, if you go to the date, it's like like a rule. You have to, you know, pretend you're kissing. In Russia, if somebody will try to kiss you on the first date, he, women will run away with with uh, in shouting, yeah, maniac, maniac, he wants to kiss me on the first date. It's no go. How it's in Bulgaria about, you know, this fear? Yes, dep depends on the people. So you have to read the body language. Usually... I prefer some kind of contact. It's either touching the uh, the cheeks or hugging in a way. Uh, but to do the handshake is you're not at a conference, and to have no touch, it's really avoidant. So you have to figure out how to make it friendly, but not to really intrude in the personal space of the other person. So. Uh, you get close, you, you read the body language. If they're open, you can hug them or do like a little a kissing on the cheeks. It's it's different, but depends on the person, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, what is, um, is there are some special things about um, uh, families in Bulgaria? For example, uh, our couple started dating. How soon they expect to be introduced to the family, to their parents to the parents families in bulgaria i recommend to not introduce your the person that you are dating to any friends or family before you are exclusive and <laughs> you need to at least 10 dates or like at least uh, dates or at least two months to date this person have a specific exclusivity conversation and when you become a couple then you can introduce them to friends and family this is my recommendation but people do different things. Depends how close they are to their family, if they live uh, close by, 
Uh, some people who are not very close, they would uh, wait until before the wedding, like the very last moment. <laughs> and I would say, okay, this is very weird because in order to decide if you want to marry somebody, you have to, to meet their closest people, you know? It's not to, of course, not to be dependent on their decision, but just to know them, just to see how they interact with each other. It's uh, important. Uh, okay, um, when you host your single events in Bulgaria, so because it will be Bulgarian people, maybe some expats, but still people who are very close in Bulgaria, are there special things about many singles coming together in your country? What they drink, how they talk, how they start flirting? Is there, is there, there is something special about... Uh... The events that we organize are not with many people. They are very specific events. We do specific activities, like it is a cooking class with uh, five women and five men, or it is a board game uh, event in a restaurant. It's a six me women and six men. So I don't do this many people parties mm -hmm. and mixers, you know? And I am the one who is moderating the event. I introduce them, uh, I ask them questions so that they can share about themselves. Then they pick a partner to play the game together or to cook together. So the whole thing is pretty moderated. Mm -hmm. And I cannot tell, I cannot really answer your question because maybe you're thinking that there are many people interacting on their own. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, I'm, I'm also not a big fan of these mixtures because uh, it's like, like you, you know, like uh, in these uh, conferences or after conferences, you start talking to somebody, but there are a lot of interesting people around you. But just because this conversation is interesting, you have no time to uh, to talk to other people. And so that's why on the single events, uh, it's very important to control the time. So it should be equal time with different people. And after the party, uh, they can do whatever they want. Yes. Yes, I agree with you. So I don't, I don't um, uh, organize this cooking or boarding games, but I agree, absolutely agree with you. With singles, it should be organized and should be moderated, and only after after event they can do whatever they want. To. Okay, uh, probably my last question, or uh, uh, you can you can tell if I forgot something to ask you to. My question is really interesting because we are you work partly international, I work international. Uh, how many people in Bulgaria can speak uh, foreign languages? I work mostly with people in Sofia, which is the capital. So most of the people speak English, most of them. Mm -hmm. And especially I choose my clients, like they are very upscale clients, they're successful. So like 90, let's say 90% of my clients speak English. Okay. And generally, gen okay, so of course, in big cities, people more likely speak uh, foreign languages, probably in the villages, they don't. don't yes, speak. yes, of course. Like everywhere in the world, you know, the bigger the city, the more is this uh, foreign culture. Yes, I just wanted to mention something about the closeness to the parents, because this is uh, typical, it's very typical. Yes, uh, some uh, singles are so close to their parents or siblings that it's obvious for me that this is the main reason that they are single, that they haven't separated themselves from the family they were born. And it's you have to keep in mind when you're dating somebody from Bulgaria to check how close they are, if they talk to their uh, mother every day or if she's bringing food you know how involved is she in their life because this can be a problem oh, yeah, absolutely absolutely and probably in uh, bulgaria is like like in russia and ukraine uh, some some generations still live together or not anymore because in russia and ukraine it's still you, you can you can meet families where uh, parents, grandparents, parents, and children live together because they cannot afford to uh, to buy to rent separately uh, apartments. So there are sometimes two or three generations living together. No, not to, not among my clients. They usually uh, either uh, live very close to each other, like uh, uh, in the same building, or like on a house on different floors, and they are just too involved in each other's lives. Mm -hmm. But it's not because they cannot afford. This is very rare. Yes, yeah, sometimes yeah, if you lose your job, you can go back to your parents for a certain period of time. But if they live with their parents, this is the first thing that I work uh, with them to, to get 
independent because Move for on. me it's not a good idea to date somebody who still lives with their parents and i work with people 30 plus so if you are 35 and still living with the parents it's not the best situation to find a partner first and second if if uh, it's if uh, it's a man who still lives with his parents for the woman it's really a sign really a red flag he has no money how are we going to build our own relationship if he has no money for for separately living renting or buying it doesn't matter so it's really a money issue even if he has the money even then you have to think why he's still with mommy you know if he even if he has the money so it's a big red flag because it's comfortable <laughs> because yes it's comfortable. she cooks she she <laughs> does the laundry <laughs> Yeah, because it's comfortable otherwise he has to spend this time for for this household himself and if mom helps why not why not yes use? you have to grow up you maybe you have to learn to cook <laughs> yes or to order you know takeaways takeaways are open to and sort the laundry maybe <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because, you know, so it's uh, I, I quite often have this uh, conversation with women. Yes, you know, probably they search for this Russian Ukrainian just because they want somebody to to um, uh, to fix their household. And, and I always say, because in, in Germany, it's quite unusual for two generations living together. It's really very, very seldom. I always say, look at him. He doesn't look slim. He doesn't look. He doesn't look hungry. So it means somehow he managed uh, to organize all these things himself. Don't worry. <laughs> Just don't worry. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Really interesting to compare different different countries and different uh, traditions, because what is normal in one country is some, sometimes absolutely weird in the other country. Yes, I just want to mention that my sister lives in Germany and she is married to a German man. So I have been witnessing, you know, a household with a Bulgarian woman and German man and kids and house and everything. So sometimes, uh, yes, it's really some things come up that some of uh, one of the partner is so bewildered that cannot believe their eyes what's happening. But that's why we have to be really accepting and curious about the different culture and ask questions. And really, it's it's in a way, it's very interesting. It can be challenging, but it's a way to grow and to, yeah, to just learn to accept and respect the differences. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if it's really such a mixture. Uh, uh, how long? Um, how long has your sister uh, married with this uh, German guy? Maybe uh, it's more than 20 years. She It's a long time. Yes, long time. And how many children do they have? Two two kids. They are already <laughs> grown up or almost. Yeah. Oh, cool. It's really, I like it because, uh, you know, a really interesting thing about uh, such international couples. Uh, if you look at the statistic in Germany for, for divorce statistic in Germany, it's like everywhere in the world. It's usually... Uh, local couples, it's about 50-55% divorce after uh, after wedding. But if you look at statistics for international couples in Germany, it's really less than 5%. So it means because of these difficulties to come together as a culture, as a bureaucracy, as all these things. So just because of it, the couples who found each other, they usually keep together just because it was complicated to organize all these things. Yeah, this might be one of the reasons. Yeah, but that's good statistics. Interesting. Yeah, because the Germans, they count everything. <laughs> you can find statistics for uh, Muslim couples, for Eastern Iraq. It's so it's, they count everything what's possible. Yeah. Okay, so best luck to your sister. Of course, next 20, 20 years <laughs> to be in, in this relationship because I think it's amazing. And um, did you ask her... Or maybe not better because we speak about Bulgarian dating. Did you ask him what is special about uh, your sister or um, mentality of your sister? Why he likes it? I should ask him this question, but I think I know some of the answers. Okay. Uh, he know he likes about Bulgarians that uh, 
we are not so um, attached to the rules. So we are very flexible and we can, we are very creative and we can always find a way around the rules. So this is something very inspiring. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true because uh, John Jomans, you know, he's the rule. I have to follow the rule. He is the law. And, you know, Eastern European always search for solutions, even if it's, yeah, even if it's complicated. Searching for solution and uh, yeah, not getting into trouble. Yeah, like, I like it. <laughs> I like because exactly this is mentality and this is interesting thing. Okay. Thank you so much for such interesting interview. I enjoyed it very much. And, uh, you know, I feel it's really Bulgarian. I knew it, but I feel it's like Bulgarian and, uh, you know, Soviet Union, so close mentality, maybe because of their language from the same group. I don't know. Also, the uh, former communist past, it's clear, yes. Uh, I, I still believe it's more about the language because we got our traditions before communist time so it's we got all this food and family and connection to the family it was far before all these political changes so it was just because of language and um, yeah, our countries thank you so much for interesting interview thank you so much for thank you i just want to say my full name it's eva kuleva and i will be happy to support you if you need me I will write I will write all your details under the video so everybody who would like to use your services as dating coach as matchmaker as a host a party host uh, they will can they will be able to find you I, I will write all details under thank the you video. very much Ksenia thank you, thank you. a Bye. lot of love for everyone <laughs> thank you bye bye